And now I've got somebody really exciting I want to introduce to you. It's Janelle Amelie. Uh, I'm sorry, we, we were practicing pronouncing her last name, Amelie. And um, I probably still got it wrong, but she's an amazing uh, acrylic um, uh, laser cutting uh, jigsaw puzzle maker. She also works in wood, but today's presentation is going to be mostly focusing on, um, let me check my script exactly what I'm supposed to be saying here. And she'll be talking about the chaos and control of hand dyeing and cutting her acrylic puzzles on a laser cutter. And of course, like any of our presentations, uh, feel free to add any questions you have in the Zoom chat and she'll be answering them after the video. Um, Joe, just please make sure everybody's still muted. And Janelle, you have the stage. Hello, my name is Janelle. Um, like Chris said, uh, put your questions in the comments. And much like him, I also did a video that shows the whole process. So uh, go ahead and roll that footage. Hi, my name is Janelle Amelli, and you're in the workshop of 3 Cat Max, Curiously Peculiar Puzzles, where I create, design, and paint and splatter the funnest puzzles to torture your friends and family with. A little bit about me, I have always been creative and I got a bachelor's of fine arts and sculpture and then I went and got a master's in instructional design so I can art my own instructions if I need to, but none of that actually helps with puzzles. And how did I even get into puzzles? Well, I was creating an instructional curriculum and I remembered this amazing experience that I had with my family when I went to visit them. We went to a coffee shop and found an artifact puzzle and I had never seen a wooden puzzle before, laser cut or otherwise. And I had so much fun putting it together with my family. So when it came time to design a project that middle school students could do on a laser cutter, I thought it would be so fun for them to make their own puzzle. So of of course, I had to make a demonstration puzzle for the students to see what to aim for. And it turned out, one, it was really fun. And two, it got me a custom order for a puzzle for retirement for my friend's father. Since 2018, I have been making puzzles on the laser cutter. So let me tell you a little bit about the equipment. Well, the very first thing is going to be the laser, which is right here. This is my Glowforge laser cutter. And it's fantastic because I can have it right in the house, which means that I can test out any idea that I can think of as soon as I design it. This is the Glowforge website dashboard where I have all of my projects loaded up. When I open one of my projects, it brings me into the laser cutting view. One of my favorite things about the Glowforge is that there is a camera inside so I can literally see the material that I want to cut on. This menu on the left is the order, as well as the strength and speed settings. Which, if you're using Proofgrade, the settings will come up automatically as it reads the QR code on the material. Which is really awesome and great for newbies that aren't used to using a laser cutter at all. I don't use Proofgrade very often, so I've got lots of my own safe settings. One of the strengths of the Glowforge laser cutter is this really simple to use interface. It's easy to teach a kid how to use it, or a grandkid, or a senior who's not really comfortable with technology. To balance that out, the biggest weakness of the Glowforge is that it is quite a bit slower than industry standard lasers like the Trotec. Reason being that the entire laser tube is connected to the gantry, which is the part that moves. So it is just limited to how fast it can move. I've sped this video up five times faster than I recorded it, and it is probably still slower than what a top-of-the-line Trotec would cut. But for in-home use and for not massive production of items, a Glowforge is a great uh, prosumer model of laser.
The other two tools that I use are my tablet and my desktop, which I use to design my puzzles and tweak all of the lines in them. I went through a lot of erasers when I used paper and pencil to draw my puzzles with. Then I bought a tablet to speed up production. It took a long time to find a good program to use, but this is Concepts Art App, which has a great interface as well as exporting in a clean SVG file. Using a pen on my tablet is a lot easier than trying to draw puzzle shapes on a desktop with a mouse. And another reason I like it is because I can easily uh, adjust the lines and the curvatures to the way that I like them without having to deal with very specific uh, node bits at this point. Here's an example of multiple undos. Say I decided that I didn't like the direction that I was going and I want to go back to where I started. I also like that I can turn off the layer view and check the original artwork or just a layer by itself to see if maybe I'm making puzzle pieces too large or too small. When I've completed the work that I want to do on the tablet, I will use Google Drive to export it to Inkscape. Here is my dark view Inkscape, where I will show you exactly how precise I am in adjusting every single angle and line. When I double click on here, it will show the nodes or anchor points. I will go through and manipulate every single one of these points to smooth them out, change the angles, adjust things so that everything Every line is exactly the way that I want it. And I'll do that for every single puzzle piece, as well as all of the artwork that I add to it. This is the outline view, which I use the most. That way I can see exactly every angle and where the laser will cut. One day I drove up to Atlanta to check out material suppliers. And I happened to be in the right place at the right time to be gifted 100 pounds of, wait for it, six inch pieces of mirror acrylic that had been cut for an order and then the order was refused because there was a little bit of chipping on the edges of the acrylic. So yay, 100 pounds of acrylic. What am I supposed to do with 100 pounds of acrylic? I really like bright colors and you can't really paint acrylic, can you? Well, I found a reference in the GoForge community forum about using art markers, alcohol ink art markers to color sealed wood. And I figured, hey, if it works on sealed wood, maybe it'll work on mirror acrylic. I found that I couldn't get really great coverage with pens because they left nib marks on there. But once I moved to bottled alcohol ink, it worked really great. And the less that I physically touch it, the better. So I used to use brushes and then I used um, the silicone basing brushes. After quite a lot of experimentation, I found that using gravity by picking up the piece and moving it right to left, even upside down, I could get more movement like I liked it, without getting marks left over from tools. And you can literally wash it with soap and water like this. You just got to be careful not to lose any of the puzzle pieces down the drain, because that would be sad. The best thing about cutting with acrylic is that it's a solid material. There are no voids, no glue pockets, no knots, no random bits of bad veneer on my plywood. And if you have ever made laser cut puzzles, then you know that the main struggle is finding a high quality plywood that will laser cut well because nobody wants to spend hours trying to cut out these creative lines with a razor blade.
Granted, the stink of a nail salon is something you do have to kind of get used to. I almost forgot to talk about the actual puzzles themselves and the art that makes them up. So you may have noticed that with the coloring, that chaos, it's actually really difficult to get very specific color in very specific areas. So I had to come up with the type of art that that didn't really matter. So now, instead of having a puzzle with the art being its own thing, my puzzles tend to be where the art, the puzzle is the art itself, or it makes the art itself. So in this case, this dragonfly, the coloring is just a base to work off of. And the puzzle itself is what makes up the dragonfly shape. I really like this guy because his tail is articulated. Here's another example with a sea turtle where the puzzle makes the art. And the octopus where it's the same thing but with more cutouts. I did figure out a way to add multiple colors, although it does tend to make the puzzle quite a bit easier. In this B puzzle, you can see how I cut sheets of black, sheets of gold, and sheets of mirror and teal to get all the different colors in it. Of course, it's kind of a pain to put them all together, but it's totally worth it in the end. And remember, save the bees! And here's a whole phalanx of bees for you. For these multicolor puzzles, it's a lot easier to do sets of them at a time. One of my favorite things about laser cutting puzzles is that that file that I made, I can use it for any material. I started this one out of acrylic, but then I thought, hey, this would be really fun to cut out of wood. I like to give back to the community that inspires me so much, so I shared this file in the free file section in the Glowforge forum. And I'll make sure that link is here today so you can get it. Which, hey, maybe you just print it out and cut it on a scroll saw. Or if you happen to have a laser, you can cut out this puzzle and have a Halloween puzzle. Have you ever heard of the Ikea effect? It comes down to if you build it or even have a part of building it, such as assembly like Ikea products, you will be much more connected to that item. So I put two and two together and thought, hey, wouldn't it be great if other people could engage in creating the puzzle by painting it themselves? And I sold a handful of these Halloween puzzles. If you're lucky, you got one. I call this type of puzzling salami slice puzzling because I started out with this Forever Valentine's chocolate box, made it into a shimmer heart puzzle, shared the file larger to cut from wood and paint yourself with a little customizable bit, and here is a future option that I'm going to make. And before we go, let me show a little bit more of my workspace. The most important part of my little one room tour, of course, is the Glowforge laser cutter. But there's also all of the material storage here and all of the material storage under there, as well as under that table. Everywhere that there is a spot, there is some wood or acrylic hanging out there. I have multiple workbenches. Here is one and here is the other because the surfaces are always full. And you really know it's been a crazy week when all of my production is overflowed from the tabletops onto the floor. And then last bit is my photo booth, right there, where I take all of the photos that you see on my website, which, by the way, my website is 3catmax.com. There you can find my shimmery acrylic puzzles as well as the watercolor wood puzzles. Hope to see you there. If you have any questions, I am here to answer them. Bye. So, yep, um, that was it. That was my place. This is my uh, photo booth that I'm sitting in. Get, get some better lighting. Um, I can't remember who is Showing uh, me any questions. That was great, Janelle. I believe Joe is uh, has some questions for you. Yes, I'm right here, Janelle. Actually, I saw that you were answering a lot of questions as they came in since you, too, had, had time while the video was running. But uh, there's some very positive comments. 
and the uh, people think your puzzles are amazing. And let Thank me you. see if I love the, the moving dragonfly. <laughs> that yeah. one is pretty fun. Um, the, if you the, want the to, you could, you could uh, summarize the questions and I could re-answer them so that people yep. that are doing just audio. So one work. of the questions that came up is how much of that acrylic do you have left now? Oh, about 25 sheets, which is not much compared to like the two or 300 sheets that I started with. <laughs> All right. The uh, another question that came up is what is the footprint of your laser cutter, you know, or the bed size? Well, there are two different things. The footprint is how much room it takes up, which is about three and a half by two feet. And the bed size is roughly 12 by 20. But because I have what is called snap marks, which is a beta feature that they're currently not working on, um, if I wanted to make a puzzle that was way bigger than that, um, I guess they're also called registration marks, but I could. All right, so that allows you to put in a piece, make all the cuts, and then perfectly align the second piece that's supposed to match and make all your cuts. Sounds like a great yeah. feature. <laughs> That's the main or the only reason that I can do the watercolor puzzles the way that I do, but um, that's for the next presentation tomorrow. <laughs> yes. There's uh, more questions here. One, one question is, is uh, will you continue to use acrylic once you run out of the batch that you currently have and will you switch to wood? So the plan is no. Uh, when I'm done with the acrylic, then I'm thinking I'm gonna be done. I will most likely take those designs that I've made that are pretty popular and submit them to the Glowforge catalog because they're now accepting designers. So it should be really interesting to see. Um, they might end up proliferating in the Etsy market. I don't know. It'll be. Hmm. Uh, always wait and see. It depends on events, right? It so, depends on uh, just about everything. Bronwyn in Wales that, uh, wants to know if you have a video of putting together a shiny pink acrylic leaf. I I've might been searching for have. You. <laughs> um, I have a shiny orange one that I did a video of, um, but I also shared that file on the Glowforge forum so anybody could cut it. And um, sorry if you guys just heard that loud. <laughs> notification um but that means somebody bought one of my puzzles right now so thank you <laughs> um yeah so anybody could have cut it because it was a file that i shared for free because i like to give back to my community like this event <laughs> yes it's great to have you participating sharing some of your knowledge um, we also if there are more questions Janelle will be available tomorrow in our laser cutters roundtable. Well, right now we're a little bit ahead of schedule. So uh, if anybody has some other questions to any of the presenters of this morning, we I think we have time to squeak them in. So I did see a question flash up from Chris asking me about how the Glowforge catalog works, which this is not really puzzle related, but until some other question comes in, it can be some filler content. Um, the Glowforge catalog is, uh, if, if people are familiar with Cricut, they have a catalog of designs that any user of Cricut can access and cut and maybe sell. I'm not sure if they're commercial designs, but it's the same way with Glowforge. So, Thank you. Thank you for buying puzzles, people. You're awesome. <laughs> um, they have recently opened it up for designers and I've been accepted as a designer. They've only, they're starting out with 50 of them and they set the prices, which is very weird, not normal. Um, thanks, Deb. Uh, and I submitted a couple of earring designs and they did very, very well, very well. Probably better than selling any physical product that I've ever done in a month. So that's why I'm thinking of doing a lot more designs with them. 
if anybody got my Christmas tree puzzle last year, that's going to go into the Glowforge catalog really soon. So you'll be able to see it everywhere. And that means, I mean, I was only able to produce like 30 of them, like cutting nonstop enough to get them shipped and done. And so that means that design will be able to be, <laughs> yeah, Deb ordered five of the Christmas trees. Um, yeah, it was really super popular because basically it was so that uh, you could paint it yourself. So you're creating a memory and it makes a great stocking stuffer gift. So you'll definitely be seeing a lot more of those, like probably on Etsy, they'll be, because it ends up being a commercial design, so. All right, and again, if we have any other questions for any of the presenters from this morning, uh, now's a good time to, um, to get them in. So Janelle, I, I don't know if you mentioned this in your video, I'm kind of monitoring several screens here, but uh, how, yeah. long have you, how long have you been doing cutting puzzles? About 2018. 2018 so, when you started. I don't know math. And, and any guesses of, uh, uh, how long you've been, or how many you've done in that time? Well, design-wise, maybe 20, but actual, like, made them and sent them to people, I couldn't say. I, okay. I could find a tally, but it would probably no. take a couple <laughs> hours. <laughs> I just, just wonder if you knew that off the top of the head, you couple hundred, couple thousand? Uh... Definitely not a couple thousand. <laughs> Probably a couple hundred. So there's a lot of people out there that are missing the opportunity to get one of your puzzles. Um, yeah, sure. I mean, <laughs> I don't know if you guys are hearing the chime from my tablet, but um, I keep getting chimes saying, hey, another person has bought some shimmery puzzles. And that's awesome. So thank you. <laughs> some people one, are grabbing them. Yeah. And one question just popped up is asking you how you package your puzzles. Um, I've actually got them right here. I, I'm not sure how to turn the camera around on here. So I have to turn my whole self around. But here are some puzzles that are laid out ready to go soon. Um, so I pack them in these um, window tins and they're packed with tissue so they don't rattle around too much. And then I also, depending on the size of the order, normally um, if it's a bigger order, I'll use these. And if it's a like a one or a two puzzle order, I'll use these um, recycled envelopes that I put some design, I put some art on there using markers. I'll uh, draw somebody's name on there. You know, I like to make it really exciting for people to get their order. Because you know, if people are treating themselves to some awesome puzzles, it should be really fun to go to the mailbox, pick them up, and then open them too. <laughs> yeah, that's a, I think that's the part that everybody loves is putting it together and discovering what it is. Definitely. I was super excited when the uh, virtual Paige Elliott puzzle exchange puzzle box arrived. <laughs> so I could see how, you know, making it fun and exciting for this, you know, mostly pretty big purchases that um, they're going to be something that stay around in my life for a long time. <laughs> so it's exciting to see new stuff. Have you considered shipping internationally? I will. Um, my website can't do it. So you just have to send me a question or don't send it through Zoom, please. <laughs> yeah. You can send me a message through Facebook or Instagram or use my email, which is uh, Janelle.Amelli at 3 Max. There's also, um, I think there's like a contact form on my website that you can just send me an email through there. It'll just pop up your email. So yeah, I mean, I'm sending some to, I think it's Camille who is driving around the French countryside this afternoon, trying to catch some of the puzzle parley stuff. Yeah, see, there. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be sending some out to France uh, soon. 
You know, I've experienced the opposite where I went to a website in the UK and it did and it said it didn't ship to the US and I contacted them and they said, Oh yeah, it's the same thing. Our website won't do it, but but direct contact, we can arrange it. Good point. Yeah. Uh, so I had one one last question for you before we go to break in another minute or so, but the uh uh I just wondered, you know, what is what is the linear cutting speed? I of, couldn't even tell you. On the laser or how long is it, you know, if you had a, a normal size puzzle, how long does it sit in the in there being cut? Well, I don't like to have anything that takes more than an hour to cut because that's insane. Okay. Um, I know other people who do a lot of engraving and engraving is a lot slower and they'll do four or five, six hour jobs. And I'm just like, huh, no. Um, for some of my acrylic puzzles, say uh, the sea turtles, I'll cut three at a time. And I use those snap marks to line up my template. And they take about, I think it's about 50 minutes for the three of them to cut and score the design on there. So it's not too bad, but so one thing about the Glowforge interface is that it actually simplifies things so much that if you're very techy, you're going to be annoyed. <laughs> it's really meant, I mean, I've seen kids make really cool stuff and be able to run the whole laser job themselves because it's meant to be really, really easy to use, but that to be easy to use, you know, it's like Apple. They hide pretty much all the tech stuff. <laughs> yep. Okay, well, thank you so much, Janelle. Right now thank it's you, about 12, 11. And so I think we can go away for about a 19 minute break. And uh, we will see you all back here uh, in about 20 minutes. And just keep in mind that's uh, Joe's on the West Coast for the East Coast folks. We're gonna reconvene at 3.30 p.m. Ah, thank you, Chris. <laughs>